Here are five things I learned in my first week in FreeCAD. In other videos, I talked briefly about the limitations that I ran into after tinkering with electronics and using recycled household products as the cases and inner workings of my builds. I struggled to make anything really impressive because I had no mechanical electronics or coding training or education. The good news is developing your own intricate case or mechanical design has become extremely fast, easy, and the best part is that what used to cost thousands of dollars is now free. If you have ever tried your hand at other 3D modeling programs, you will remember that first time of immediately feeling lost. There are several workbenches in the form of sculpting, texturing, shading, animation, rendering, etc., depending on the program that you choose. On top of those workbenches, there are endless options and alterations possible with menus, within menus, within menus, within menus, within menus. This is how I felt the first time I opened up Blender. FreeCAD and similar CAD software are equally daunting. The good news is it gets easy really quickly and there are a few things I want to share with you in the hopes of making your learning process faster. Disclaimer, this is not a FreeCAD tutorial. Number one, get your mouse settings right. This is the first obstacle I ran into. You will immediately notice that you will start FreeCAD and if you create a part with a padded sketch and when you try to move the camera around, it isn't very intuitive. It is weird. Go into your edit, preferences, display, navigation, and change the mouse and orbit style to something more familiar. I had played in Blender before, so I chose the Blender mouse option and the trackball orbit option with rotation mode to object center. You do what you want. This is what worked for me. Number two, workbenches and add-ons. The workbenches are the core selling point of FreeCAD. Depending on what you are making or what type of edit you are doing, will determine which workbenches you will pull up. Think of this as exactly what it is called, a workbench. If you want to sketch out an idea, you would use a drawing table and use rulers and all that shit. The sketch workbench is what you want. Let's say you wanted to design a new part, which will eventually turn into a car engine. You would choose the part design workbench to add dimensions and pockets of other details because you are designing a part. The whole engine can be thought of as a part. The path workbench lets you create CNC-like engraves into objects. The tech draw workbench is like a 2D blueprint designer, kind of like what you might see looking at a patent for an invention or assembly instructions, or even a schematic, etc, etc, etc. Everything you do is within these workbenches. Just imagine yourself in a big garage, moving from workbench to workbench to workbench until your CNC, 3D printed, laser engraved part pops out all finished and ready to sell. The workbenches take a lot of time and focus in order to master, but once you get the basics down, you'll be able to start poking around and trying new things out. The add-ons feature is incredible. Go up to the Tools tab, Add-ons Manager. This is where you can shop around for other workbenches that will make your life much, much easier. Some really smart people spend a lot of time coding these and allowing you to make things quickly such as gears, airplane wings allow you to attach several parts together or even create an exploded view of your build. Add one at a time and play around with each one. I suggest you start with a gear or fastener add-on first. In the add-on menu, you will notice a macros tab. Those are Python code that automate some work for you, but I consider that to be a little more advanced if you were just starting out. So just know it is there for later. Number three, part, body, sketch, constraints, pad, hold. These are the basic building blocks you will be dealing with. Each part you create is called a document, kind of like a blueprint. In a fresh new document, you need to create a part which is like a folder that will contain all of your work. Next, you give the part a body, which acts like the compilation of all the dimensions and features you will put into your design. If you have a case with a lid, you will be creating a separate body for each of those. Inside the body, you set the basic parameters of your object in your sketch. You can sketch freehand or choose rectangles, circles, and alter them from there, etc. Imagine your 3D part you are designing growing up from the table from the sketch you make. You can make changes to it anytime. The next is the tricky and most important part of this process if you want any sort of accurate placement, especially if you want to play around with the different sizes or make holes or other extensions from the object in the form of other simple shapes. What am I talking about? I'm talking about constraints. You should usually add constraints to your sketches. This helps perfect the placement of your sketch and the dimensions of your sketch in relation to the boundaries and other objects within the sketch. 
For example, if you want to make a box and cut a hole in it, you would sketch a circle on one of the faces of your box and set the diameter or radius your choice. Then you would constrain the center of the circle to maybe the middle point of your box. The coolest thing about parametric designing is that you can go back and make changes to your sketch and the constraints. You can change the size and dimensions of your box and the hole will stick to the constraints you choose, holding it in the same place in relation to the point you reference. This sounds confusing until you try it and surprisingly, it's a lot of fun when you realize how much power you hold in your mouse and keyboard. It only takes a few days of practicing this process and you will get it and now you are ready for the next step. After you have a constrained basic sketch and been given the green light on the constraints made on your 2D sketch on the plane you choose, I usually work on the XY plane, you can bring it into the 3D world by padding it. From there you can adjust the height and sometimes you may want to reverse the direction it emerges into the 3D world. My advice is to play with this whole process until you feel comfortable with it. The good news is it won't take you that long to get the feel of it. The last thing you need to know how to do is make a hole. Remember, there are several ways to do this. There is a hole option in the part design workbench. You select the body you are working on to make sure it is active and select the sketch you want to become the hole. Then you can select hole or pocket. I usually use pocket and if that doesn't do it, I select the other. You should have magically drilled a perfectly clean hole right where you made your sketch. Practice this process and play around with some of the options in the pad and pocket and hole features. Oftentimes you may have to reverse your pocket or your hole. Another tip is that you want to make your pocket or your hole longer than the actual case that you're cutting out of. Bonus tip, you can move the position of the pieces on the body by editing the sketches attachment offset and then position and then edit the X, Y, or Z axis placement. This should move things around for you and may come in handy later. Number four, there are many ways to do the same thing. In FreeCAD, there is no one way to do something. Although on the surface it can appear and feel super logical and unforgiving, the truth is the exact opposite. The program is very forgiving and open to suggestions. The hole versus pocket decision, for example. You can drill a hole in the design both ways. So if you feel lost or frustrated, try and think of a different approach to do something. Think of additive versus subtractive sculpting. Assuming you are a perfect robot, you could make the same sculpture of the Sphinx using either method, and it would turn out exactly the same. If you need to design a toilet bowl, you can build it from a 2D sketch and add other sketches to the body and create curves and grooves. Or you could take a block and cut out the areas you don't need. If FreeCAD had an online dating profile, it might read something like, version.19 free parametric. I live a life of strict standards and measurements. Open to trying new things. Number five, save often and click the refresh to recompile. Make sure you are saving your work as you make many changes and the software can only walk back a few steps. Also, sometimes you make changes to a sketch or a pad and nothing seems to change. This is when you can hit F5 or edit refresh to recompile the body and its features. I find that if this doesn't work, I just restart FreeCAD and reload it and it's fine. I hope this helps you to feel less intimidated with CAD design overall and more familiar with the STL model creation process. When you're ready to save it as an STL file, just go to the document tree with all your changes on the left side and go to file, then export and save as STL if you want to 3D print it later. Make sure that when you export your STL file that you have your appropriate body selected. For example, if you have a lid that's separate from your actual case, you need to make sure that you have that selected when you export your STL file. The article for this video is linked down below in the description along with the FreeCAD download link. You can also find the article on my website, roboticsforbeginners.com. It's in the observation section, which is the blog portion of my website. And I plan on continuing to update that site regularly. So give it a spin and see what you can print. Even if it's a little 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter block, see what you could do. There is another channel that I would like to recommend called Mango Jelly. It's got some great tutorials. I highly suggest you check them out. Let me know anything else that you learned while you were starting out in FreeCAD or other similar software that might help other people. Until then, Ugh, you're so boring. Stay grounded. Next time, bring me a snack.